UK's childcare system needs fixing. So we're going to one of the world leaders to see just how much better it could be. So here we are in Finland. This is the parliament. Over there is Udi, which is an amazing library that's here. The sun is shining. And we're going to find out if it really is better to be a parent here. The cost is here uh, less than 300 euros. Wow. Full time. Full time. 10 hours a day. And uh. yeah. How can civilized country have legislation that discriminates men? I can work the rest of my life, but I, I can't spend more time with my kids. Um. How much do you pay for your childcare? 250 euros. 50 euros per month. 50. 50 euros per month. Who's next? Which victim are we going to get next? How much do you think it would cost in the UK? Let's say around 600 euros. 200 per month? I wish it was 200 per month. Kind of average is 1,500 a month. Okay, yeah. That's a lot of money. Wow, exactly. it sounds a bit confusing. <laughs> Many parents in the UK would dream of paying as little for nursery as they do in Finland. But it isn't just the costs that are so different, it's the culture too. It's a culture that puts children's rights at the heart of everything. Hi, Hi. so nice to meet you. We have here about uh, 105 children. Most of them are five days a week here. One thing that we keep coming back to in the UK is the fact that the cost of childcare yeah. is so crippling. People are quite regularly paying between one and two thousand pounds every month for their oh, childcare. Yeah, that, 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 that's a lot. <laughs> that's really right? a lot, yeah. <laughs> the cost is here less than 300 euros. <laughs> Children get three meals. Every daycare center is open from 6 to 6, but we have also daycare centers which are open in the evening. And what about the weekend? Yeah. We have here very permanent staff. Almost all are educated. You have to go to university. They study about three years there. What is the number of children that each adult can look after? If the children are under three years old, there is four. Over three years old, there are seven children per one. So why is it so much better in Finland? The most important thing is the right for children to be here, uh, not the parents to go to work. <laughs> they want to come here, they want to have friends. Their skills are developing here, social, but uh, also other skills. That's, that's so important. Okay, well that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Can I move to Finland, please? Yes, you can. Can. Do you know any houses that are free? Yeah, I think that we have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you ever worked out how much you've paid in total? Oh, okay. I did that. I think it was about fifty-five thousand pounds that I paid for my two kids, and that's not even that's not even full time. What we saw in this daycare is amazing. Like the kids were so well behaved. They're learning through play. There's so many different areas for them. They've got this incredible outside play area. Why can't UK children have that kind of idyllic setting? Why do UK parents have to, you know, worry every month about their childcare bills and if they're going to be able to afford them? Or, Parents on low earnings know that they can't afford to put their children into childcare, so their children don't get all of the benefits that these children are having. Finland's daycare system is the product of long-term planning. The first policy was put in place more than half a century ago. But now the country is applying the same child-first thinking to paternity leave policies. I've come to the Finnish parliament where I'm meeting Hannah Sarkinen, the minister in charge of these reforms. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, my name's Hannah. Really nice to meet nice you, to Hannah. Meet I'm you. Lexi from The Guardian. Hi. You introduced about a year ago this progressive policy to really encourage fathers to take more parental leave. What was the big difference that it made? Both parents are equal in legislation. The child has the right to the same amounts 
of the paid parental leave. Mm -hmm. That uh, gives a message to the society that parenthood is equal. Employers would see it doesn't matter whether you employ women or men, they both do their share at the unpaid care work at home. I think that point is really key in the UK fathers, not all fathers, but fathers who are working in, in permanent contracts have the right to two weeks paternity leave. I don't understand how men, men don't rebel. Because it is such an important time at your life to, to spend time with your child. Yeah. And if you're discriminated against in the legislation, how don't men rebel? They should. What could the UK learn from Finland about its early years education? I think the be best system is universal and tax funded system. I think it should be completely free for everybody. It's expensive though. Of course it is expensive, but that's why we collect taxes. So we need to tax people more in the UK. Maybe tax the rich more. <laughs> Elections in April brought a change of government in Finland and the new Prime Minister went into coalition with the far-right Finns party. But progressive childcare is so embedded here that even their austerity programme is unlikely to roll back on new reforms. We've just come into the Hall of Parliament. There's five statues here and they each represent different things to the Finnish people, so hard work or spiritual fortitude. Here there's a woman front and centre in Parliament and she's holding a baby and she signifies the future. When you think about how they approach early years education here in Finland and how they think about the rights of the child and how they put that in, in the centre of those decisions that they're taking, I just think that's really significant and it really gives you hope that even though there is a change of government here, and that government is significantly more right-wing, that that sense of progress and investment in the future will continue. There's no official data yet on how many parents have taken up the new parental leave offer, but research by Mothers for Business suggests it could be as high as 40% in the first year. So we're on our way to meet a dad who has uh, decided to take more parental leave this time because of the new policy that's in Finland uh, than he did for his first child. I'm um, also eating um, probably my seventh salmon-based meal of, uh, of this trip. <laughs> Leafy down here. They're cool tiny little roses. It's that one, I think. There we go. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Should we eat it? Uh, take something to eat, I think. So, how long um, are you going to take with Edith, and how long did you take last time? So with our, our first kid, I, I took three weeks, and now we did it. Uh, in in total, it will be four months. Did you feel like last time you hadn't had enough time? We had actually plans that I would stay home a longer time. It just didn't happen. With the new system, I wanted to be home for sure. It was just a question of, of how long. Are you okay with me playing with your baby? Yeah, She's course, so yeah. adorable. <laughs> yeah. What was the kind of thinking behind it? You hear more and more about how important the early phases of the childhood is and how it might affect the relationship in, in the long term. I can work the rest of my life, but I, I can't spend like more time with yeah. with my kids when they are this age, so. I mean, I genuinely think this is the single most kind of revolutionary feminist act yeah. that you can take, mm. particularly as a man, yeah. is to take time off with your kids yeah. and to share childcare and the, and, the, and the house as well, you know, share that equally. Do you think in Finland that you've managed to kind of get rid of this negative image around dads, you know, that dads are useless or they're not interested? Definitely I think so. With our first kid, like, whenever we were leaving home and, and going on a trip, I, I never knew what to take for the kid. I was like completely lost. When you're the like main parent, then you like get to know those routines and like what works for them. So where are we going now? So we're going to the daycare to get Edith's brother Eliel. What I keep 
coming back to is the sense that like it just doesn't feel so much of a struggle here. The, the system has definitely made our, our life super easy. Well, obviously it could work that I, for example, would be now home with both kids. But I believe that it's, it's good for our family, it's good for Eliel to have the opportunity to be at the daycare. See, I couldn't take that decision. When I had my second child, I took my son out of daycare. I wanted to have one on one, one time yeah. with my baby, but we just couldn't afford to yeah. have him in childcare at the same time as I was on maternity leave. The daycare is in, in, uh, in that old building there. What do you think the UK can learn from Finland? I think we need to learn that it's not a zero-sum game. Like, we don't have to pit parents against non-parents. I think we also can learn you need to invest in this stuff over the long term. Like, it's not a quick fix. But just having that sense that the state might actually help and policies could actually make a real difference can have a massive impact on people's lives and actually can make people really quite a lot happier. In the UK, we're getting new policy that will make it a bit easier for parents, but you need the money behind it. You need the infrastructure behind it. You need a workforce plan. And we don't see that happening in the UK. You have to hope that things will get better, but I think that change in the UK has to come from civic society, because unfortunately, I can't really see it coming from the top. <laughs>